Once again, thanks for being a part of this journey. And as we have walked through the first three books of the New Testament, the Synoptic Gospels, and uh, how they had parallel stories and events, now we come to the book of John, which takes a totally different turn and a different look at Christ. John was, uh, the authorship, we believe, was uh, John the Apostle, who was a part of uh, the inner three. The disciple is described as the disciple who Jesus loved. And so uh, this is from someone who was so close to him and, and really catches the heart of Christ and who he is. And so uh, John wrote this. The traditional date would be in the perhaps 80s or 90s. Uh, John was the only apostle who wasn't martyred for his faith. Uh, and uh, history teaches us that after the fall of uh, Israel, the fall of Jerusalem in about 70 AD, that he moved to Ephesus and lived there uh, most of the rest of his life. Uh, he wrote this for a general audience, and uh, the purpose was to introduce Jesus Christ to people as their personal Savior. And it starts off with the theme that Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God. And uh, just the, the start of the, the book of John kind of encapsulates it. In John 1.1 1, 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, and when he's saying Word, he's talking about Christ. That Jesus is God's words in flesh. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing has been made. Nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So he starts right off with uh, helping us to understand who, who Jesus is and how he is the Son of God. So uh, John's going to stress of seven different things, uh, God's love for the world, how he sent us his Son, that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. Jesus fulfilled the old, the old covenant. He fulfilled that and moved us into the new. Um, Jesus is the only way to God. The, there are no other roads. A lot of people believe that all religions, all faiths lead to God. And that's just not true. According to the Word of God, as we look at the book of John, Jesus is going to make it very clear He is the way. Interest is uh, that, that it's open to all. Anyone who puts their faith, regardless of uh, age, color, sex, whatever, when you put your faith in Jesus, you have the ability to be uh, in heaven with him when we in this life. Interest is, entrance into heaven is by faith in Christ, and Jesus wants us to share our faith with others. You know, it's a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of times people say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's really kind of how heaven works as well. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then that's the, the door that opens heaven to, to all of us. So the key words that we find uh, in, God, in, in John's Gospel is the word logos, and it's uh, Jesus faithfully reveals God because he was with God from the beginning, and he is God. Also, I found it interesting that, secondly, uh, believe. In this gospel, uh, John uses the verb to believe 98 times. He uses the verb 98 times, but he never uses the noun form of believe or faith. To emphasize that faith is not a creed to agree with, but a life to be lived. And uh, true faith is a relationship of obedience. So faith, and he's going to draw that out as we go through the book of John, and so he uses uh, uh, the word uh, sin also in a couple different uh, Greek variations. Uh, 38 times, God sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus. He sent his son to save the world. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to us to help us Jesus sends us as his ambassadors. And the use of this, the word sent reflects the Jewish concept of that the sent one 
has the same authority as the sender and is doing the will of the sender. Because that's what Jesus emphasized. He was doing the will of the Father. That He, he said, I, I don't say anything except for what the Father gives me to say. I do nothing on my own. I'm simply doing what His Heavenly Father asked Him to do. In the, uh, in the book of John, we have light versus darkness. You know, uh, the verses that we read where uh, light was from the beginning. Light expels darkness. And uh, men love darkness because their deeds are evil. And so they run from the light. Jesus is the true light for all mankind. One of the great themes of John also is love. It's about God's love. It talks about uh, the Father loved the Son. Secondly, the Father loved the world. It talks about Jesus loved his own. Uh, and he does one of, the, one of the things that he asks us to do in this book is we are called to love one another. The proof we love God is our obedience. He says, if you love me, obey my words. So as we walk through the book of John, we look at, uh, he's got seven different miracles that he lists. He calls them signs. Uh, there are no parables in the book of John. However, Jesus gives and speaks uh, revelation of who he is in the book of John. There are the uh, seven, or I would say perhaps eight, I am statements. Some people don't count the first one where he simply says, I am, in uh John 8.58 says, I am. Uh, when Moses was going to the children of Israel, and he said, who am I going to tell them has sent me? God said simply, I am. And so Jesus refers to that in the sense he's saying, I am God. So he says, I am. And then he says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way the truth, and the life, and I am the true vine. He, each one of those gives greater revelation of who he is and how he interacts in our lives. So he claimed to be the Son of God. He used the phrase, I am. In uh, John 10, 30, he says, I and the Father are one. He is called the only begotten Son of God. John stresses the private ministry of Jesus. He, he records... 27 different interviews that Jesus held and uh, stresses that he's the savior of the world. You know, and it's interesting because John only really covers 20 days in the life of Jesus' ministry and a third of the Gospel of John deals simply with one day. Um, John records Jesus' intercessory prayer for us and for his disciples. In John's Gospel, we find... Uh, the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. That's the one who talks about how his friend Lazarus had passed away. And he came. In fact, he delayed. And then he went. And they said, if you had been here. And in John chapter 11 and also John chapter 14, there are verses that give us hope. Because uh, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, and that through him we will have life. Um, through both of those passages, we have uh, comfort. In John chapter 14, he talks about, if I go away, I'll come again. For you know, He's preparing a mansion for us in heaven, that where, where he is, we can also be. So as you're going through the, uh, the book of John, to look at it, and, and there's a passage in John chapter 3 that a lot of people know and have read. And John 3.16 is the encapsulated for the whole Bible. If you simply boil the, the, the Bible down to just a couple verses, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. 
Jesus is revealed in John as the way, the truth, and the life. We have to put our faith in him. And so as you walk through this um, book to think about this is being written by John, the close disciples, the, the one who had the inner workings, that when he'd send the others away, he'd have just the three with him, who was on the Mount of Transfiguration. This was his account of Jesus. And so uh, he reveals to us his great love. And so as you're reading through this book, uh, just say, God, help me to understand your love. I, I just encourage you to take a extra time to read what Jesus prayed about you in his prayer for those of us who were not a part of the disciples and to see how much he loves you. Thanks for being a part of this journey and we're looking forward to even greater things.